Biomass, unlike fossil fuels, is environmentally favorable because it replaces the energy source quickly. On a global basis, biomass has enormous energy capability. Standing biomass fuel or renewable above ground biomass that may be collected and used as an energy source is predicted to reach 100 times the world's annual energy consumption because they are easy to cultivate, collect and process. Perennial grasses are an ideal source of lignocellulosic biomass for biogas production. There are many examples. To give an example of Thailand, several perennial grasses including para, rosy, guinea and napier grass are utilized as biogas feedstock. The most favorable of these grasses is napier grass, which produces close to 70 to 375 tons of biomass per hectare in a year. Furthermore, multiple studies have shown that co-digestion produces more biogas than monodigestion. The goal of this training is to get an overview and concept was to better understand the napier grass monodigestion and its long-term impacts on biogas generation. Napier grass is an ideal substrate for biogas production in the tropical region. Biogas plants with high load technology using napier grass are shown to satisfying the increasing energy demand generation caused by increased industrialization in our country. It is possible to use not only waste as a substrate for biogas plant but also specially grown green mass. In the tropics and subtropics, perennial elephant grass such as royal, sudanese or napier grass is wide, widespread. The feature of napier grass is high yield which shows around 3 to 5 cuts per year based on the different genotypes. This grass is also a forage crop. The best biogas yield is demonstrated by grass with an average age of 4 to 4.5 4 .5 months and 30 to 33 percent of dry matter. This shows a biogas yield of output of almost 100 to 145 cubic meter per ton. Grass is so cheap in production that the payback of this type of biogas plant is comparable to different types of raw material. Pre-treatment of napier grass, yes, it is required due to its low water consumption compared to other crops and the fact that it can be cultivated in non-arable lands, avoiding the direct competition with food crops. However, biogas production is limited by the characteristics of the feedstock. In particular, its complex lignocellulose structure. Hence, different pre-treatment methods are being investigated for grass structure disruption before undergoing the anaerobic digestion process. There are various pre-treatment methods or techniques used in grease, uh, grassland biomass. Pre-treatment techniques were categorized into mechanical, microwave, thermal, chemical and biological groups. The effect of the application of each studied method on biogas yield and on energy balance can be discussed in our training. A further comparison between the covered techniques can be discussed in detail during the training session of course. Hybrid napier grass selection and nutritional quality. This is one of the key factor where variety selection is critical for achieving high yield per unit area under a variety of soil and agroclimatic conditions. Napier variety of PB233 yielded more green fodder and dry matter. Co3 hybrid napier type produced higher green forage and dry matter output in various different genotypes like Co1, CO2 or CO3, KKM1, APN1, Saguna, Sampurna, DHN6, PBN83, PBN233, Yashwant, RBN9, Swetika hybrid napier grass, Pusa napier grass. So these are different uh, based on different genotypes. Different yields in terms of tons per hectare was found and it is important to select the napier grass genotype based on the local climatic conditions. When we talk about the yield per, per acre or per hectare is found to be this ranges between 140 to 400 per hectare based on different genotypes showed different results. Managing the harvesting and cutting you need a plan in, uh, to how understand about the cutting forage. Cutting it at the proper stage is critical to obtaining better quality and biogas yield. According to Vanchuk, total dry matter was higher during 80 day cutting interval compared to 45 day cutting interval, but crude protein content was opposite. Furthermore, the cutting interval has a considerable impact on total dry matter, plant height, number of tailors, leaves, crude protein content of the plant. It was discovered that if the napier grass is harvested at 45 days, 
the nutrients and the parameters operate properly. When we talk about the moisture content, it ranges between 67 to 70%. The viability of Nepal grass has a feedstock for biogas production. Nepal grass is a fast growing high yielding crop that is also very nutritive, making it excellent for use as energy crop for biogas production. Nepal grass may be digested without any additional substrate. However, after the sixth cycle, the gas production began to decline when we saw in various experiments. Nepal grass required either cow manure or chicken manure, which is rich in nitrogen substrate to provide a steady level of biogas production for a longer run. The results of experiments done by us showed that Nepal grass contains a high concentration of organic compounds, which are appropriate for use in the anaerobic digestion process to sustain microbial life and convert nutrients into biogas. The methane proportion was discovered almost around 60%, which can be increased with co-digestion. This also implies that it is quite conceivable to achieve stable production or operation using Nepal grass as a substrate for biogas production, along with co-digestion, as well as to maintain the CN ratio within the digester. The digestate produced by biogas digestion is a good source of fertilizer as well as being advantageous to environmental friendly or safety and management. It was determined that Nepal grass has an energy crop has the potential to be an alternative energy supply. Yes, saying all this when we approach or when any entrepreneur approaches us, the only first question asked by any entrepreneur is how much Nepal grass is grown per hectare or per acre of land? What is the biogas production per ton of nuclear grass? Yes, this question can be answered saying that, as I said, that there are different types of genotypes available in our country. We need to understand what type of genotype can be grown in that particular area, which depends on soil intake, soil uptake, as well as the location, temperature in that particular area. And based on that, that genotype can be selected, which shows on an average 100 to 150 is a uh, safety figure which you can take so 150 is a conservative figure which can be taken as 150 tons per acre of land okay and the second question about the amount of biogas generation when you're talking about 30 to 33 percent total solid content yes biogas generation from napier grass has a possibility to generate almost 100 to 140 cubic meters per ton of napier grass when you combine the same napier grass along with different types of nitrogenous rich substrates like chicken manure or slaughterhouse waste which has more amount of nitrogen obviously the gas production has boosted and shown a uh, increased figure up to 150 cubic meter per ton of the feedstock to the digester yes this can be achieved and to be on the conservative side i would always suggest to go ahead with 140 cubic meters along with adjusting the cm ratio within the digester coming back to whether pretreatment is required for the napier grass yes Pretreatment is a must because of its lignocellulosic nature. One needs to understand that unless you pretreat the feedstock, the production of gas, uh, the production in the gas generation would be on the lower side. So, without pretreatment, yes, it was found that the biogas generation ranges between 80 to 100 cubic meters. With pretreatment, yes, it has increased multiple fold. As I discussed in the beginning, that there are various different types of pretreatment methods available. We need to understand the techno feasibility of each feedstock along with the technology selection. After the feedstock pretreatment, you need to understand what type of digesters are best suited for Napier grass. Combined with what type of upgradation unit best suits for Napier grass or the gas generated out of Napier grass. Obviously, whatever technologies are available, we need to do the pre economic feasibility study and that can be suggested. Yes, during the detailed training program session, all these points would be covered. The most important thing to understand about growing of napier grass is to the plan which needs to be in place is how much land is required for operating a 12,000 cubic meters or 5 TPD CNG generation plant. So you need to understand about what would be the cutting cycles of that particular genotype. We can uh, conclude about based on the genotype selected. Yes. On an average, it depends on 75 to 150 acres of land required based on different genotypes and different quantities uh, generated per genotype every year. So yes, looking forward to take you to the session where we can discuss about Nepal grass in detail and the other energy crops which can be shown and considered for biogas generation. Thank you.